how's it going, Jose? Good, good. Um, things are going pretty good. I always like to start with a positive focus, something that you are excited about or grateful for. Um, I'm grateful for the people of the community, just everyone. Um, there's a lot of love and support that I get from people coming out, just even going out to events. Um, just, you know, it's, it's over, it gets quite overwhelming sometimes. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I it's, saw, it's I, we were at Dream State and I see like a lot of people coming up to you, saying hi, yeah. giving you hugs, um, taking pictures. Was yeah. that always the case? Um, that wasn't always the case. I mean, it's, things started like warming up after time, so, and yeah. then the love has increased at events. Like, mm -hmm. Some people say like, oh, Plurry's dead and whatnot, but no, it's still there, it's, mm -hmm. still, it's still growing, it's still thriving. Yeah. Um, and so when do you start noticing like just a lot more people coming up to you? Was it after like the documentary or? Um, yeah, it, it started getting pretty crazy after the documentary. There's uh, not uh, Escape Escape from Wonderland 20, 2014 was the year that that event that it got really overwhelming for me. Uh -huh. But over time I, I've learned to like be patient like you know take it take it one step at a time so yeah. And how did that all like come about? How did you end up like being a part of the film anyway? Um, being a part of the film, well, I mean, there was a casting call online, so I just applied and uh, got some calls back and went through the whole process. Mm -hmm. And tell us a little bit about how you started either listening to electronic music, raving, all of that. Um, electronic music, I started listening back in 08 um, from like family members, cousins, and uh, good friends of mine. And uh, I just like, I used to listen to a lot of hip hop and rap mm -hmm. and stuff, and I just didn't care for the lyrics. I cared for more of the, the beats and the sounds. And um, so once my family and my friends showed me the music, then mm -hmm. that's when I started like getting heavily into it. But it wasn't until Beyond Wonderland 2010 that I went to my first event. Mm -hmm. So yeah. since then, it's been. It's a been an amazing journey. Yeah. It's a never ending. And for those that don't really know your story, like, um, why don't you start off? Just kind of tell us a little bit about your background, your story, and all of that. Um, well, I'm from Southern California. Uh, um, I, I, I wasn't always in a wheelchair. I was, I was up and walking. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I had, I have scoliosis. Doctors did a 18-hour surgery, did rod placement and that surgery left me uh, paraplegic. Um, it was pretty brutal for me, pretty, some dark times in there, but um, over time I've learned to, to accept the way things are mm -hmm. and uh, move forward. That's, I mean, there's no point in being stuck in dark if you can't move out of it, you know? So just getting my head straight, getting things together and moving along, moving forward. And uh, dance music has always been that outlet where I can just mm -hmm. like wild an out, let everything flow out. So that's that's how I've been involved with the music, and that's how I got. Yeah. You know, that's a part. That's a part of me. It's always. It's been some good times and some bad, but yeah, there's always a learning experience and everything. So. Yeah. And like, so when was that? Like, when was the surgery? Like, what did you think was going to happen after the surgery? Um, well, the thing here was is that I was. I had to wear a brace and I never wore it because it was just uncomfortable, mm -hmm. it was hot and sweaty. Yeah. So over time, doctor was like, okay, well, you know, we don't do surgery or you don't put on another brace, you're going you to have heart failure, your lungs are going to collapse. Mm -hmm. That whole surgery thing happened when I was 15 years old. So I want to say it was like September of 2006. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, that's, that's right around the time that it happened. I mean, I was out of school for three, four years, and um, within like about two years after that, within that time frame, that's when I had gotten into the music. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which, like, how would you say you were feeling at that point, and how did music have an impact on you? Um, at that point, I was, it was pretty rough for me. Uh, a lot of dark times, and, you know, going out with friends and going to listen to music, it was, it helped me turn from negative into positive. So that's that's how music has helped me evolve and whatnot. Mm. 
And what does dance music or the dance music culture mean to you? Or for, for those that are watching that aren't too familiar with raves, festivals, EDM, all of that? Um, this whole scene, it's about love and acceptance and support and uh, unity. And that's why I always fall back into it. Because I, I can feel, I feel like I always have a place. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, out and about, like, you know, when I'm out in the streets or, you know, in L.A. or whatnot, going out. There's like there's no communication. There's no you know interaction with people. Mm -hmm. I mean it's there here with me here and there, but at events it's like constantly. It's and it's you feel like your life. You know what I mean? There's yeah. you know this is what you want. This is where you want to be. And this is where you can always go to to seek love and acceptance. Yeah. So how was that first like festival for you? Like, it, tell us, bring us back <coughs> like that moment. Okay, so my first, well, first festival beyond two thousand ten, it was over water. It was just <laughs> like going in there and just like, wow, okay. Uh, do I stay in this area so I don't get lost from my friends, or do I just wander around and just you know? Um, but yeah, no, I stayed confined into one area because it was new territory. It was very yeah. It was, I, you know, there was a lot of fear in that because, you know, me being in my situation, not knowing what it's really about. Uh -huh. um, but no, by like ADC 2010, which was my second event, then that's when I was just like, okay, let's let's have some fun. Let's go wander around. Let's go yeah. enjoy it. So yeah. let's go see all the new stages. So that's, that's how it was for me the first and second time. Mm -hmm. And then how many festivals would you say you've been to so far? Honestly, I lost count of how many festivals I've been to. Uh -huh. I've been going to festivals since 2010. So at least uh, Beyond, EDC, Ultra Music Festival. Um, well, I just came out here in August for Future Sun of Egypt. Mm -hmm. So I was like, yes, <laughs> I've been waiting for this. Yeah, are so, you a big trans fan? Yeah, a huge uh -huh. trans fan. Uh, fall, fell into trance in 2010 and ever since I haven't, I haven't never let it go. Yeah. How was uh, Dream State for you since that just ended yesterday night? <laughs> Dream State was amazing. It was, uh, I liked it a lot better than SoCal. Mm -hmm. um, There's been comments on I that. I mean, yeah, there's a lot of comments. Like, I see it everywhere. Like, oh, uh, San Francisco's lineup was not as good as uh -huh. SoCal's. But then, like, coming back over, coming over here and, like, looking at the production, it was, you know, a lot of people love more LEDs and more yeah. space, you know? But I mean, you know, space is good, you know? It's yeah. always good to dance. But also, you know, people do take production very seriously, so. Yeah. Um, who are some of the artists that you were really looking forward to seeing? And then who were some of, like, your favorite sets? Um, well, my favorite artist overall this weekend at Dream State was Neptune Project. Neptune Project? Neptune Project delivered they were amazing i missed yeah. their five hour set in la so i was like no i need uh -huh. i need to go that's the only reason why i came out here yeah so um but as far as other favorite artists that i did enjoy uh john callahan mm -hmm. brian carney um marcus schultz and uh sean ties sean okay. ties and simon patterson yeah yeah those yeah, are really top good. favorites yeah yeah and so, of course, a lot of people are starting to like know your story, and you know, of course, they find inspiration in that. Mm -hmm. So, what, like, what message do you have for them out there, or what type of inspiration do you help to hope to give off? My message to anyone out there would be: don't ever give up. Find what makes you happy. Chase after it. Don't give up on it. As much as negative feedback you get from family members or you know, people that you are really close to, you know, don't let go of what makes you happy. Because mm -hmm. that is key, like, w w why are you doing what you're doing if you're not happy? Like, um, I wanted to chase being an anesthesiologist, but someone that I met at a club in Miami um, during Mi Miami Music Week, she told me, she's like, why are you chasing after something that's just going to give you money? And I was like, she was like, do you love music? I'm like, yeah. She's like, don't let that go because that's you. That's what makes you happy. So if you're passionate, if you're very passionate about it, chase after it and don't give up because yeah. you never know how close the opportunity might be around the corner if you can't see it straight mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. So not only that, it's just accept things the way they are and 
don't focus too much on the past because the past is, is not going to help you. Yeah. You need to focus on now and tomorrow. So that's my advice for anyone out there. Yeah. And you know, that, now that you mentioned that, like, were you struggling with that? And like, up until when that you was it that you learned to kind of accept that? Um, like me being in the wheelchair or... Yeah, like, like, like not focusing on the past or then realizing that you should chase after your passion. Was it that conversation? Was well, it... That, that conversation itself, it, it just gave me a complete 360. Like, uh, I, I wasn't expecting that. And I'm like, you know what? No, like, I'm here. There's a reason why I'm here. And I'm, gonna get, I'm not going to give up on it, you know? Mm -hmm. The way I am is like, I... People tell me things and they're things that come along my way for a reason. And whether it's something negative, there's something to learn from it if it's negative, mm -hmm. or it's positive, there's always something to learn from it. And you say that like, don't listen to, you know, even if it's family or friends, if they aren't supportive of that, like, did you experience that as well? Um, yeah, actually, you know, my dad was very brutal with me, like starting going off to these events, he's like, um, why are you wasting your money, you're wasting your time, do something productive, go to school. And I'm just like, well, I'm going to school. I'm doing okay. Like, why are you bashing me for what makes me happy, mm -hmm. you know? So I completely ignored him. And over time, I'm just like, look look what I'm doing now. I was like, can you tell me I'm not doing anything with my life? No, like, I'm doing what makes me happy. And good things are coming, coming along my way. But now my dad has been more acceptive about it. And he sees that, you know, this is actually, this is actually getting me somewhere. This is actually making me happy. Yeah. And, you know... For that, that something that's gonna make me happy, something that he might not understand, it's he's actually supportive about it now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what is what is next for you? Like, I know you want to kind of get into music. Tell us about that. Um. Well, f for me, next thing, well, what I'm working on right now is um, getting all my tools for production. So I already have my DAW. I already have a synthesizer, um, my audio plugin. Um, I already have my MIDI keyboard. Mm -hmm. So. Now it's just collecting a little bit more stuff and chewing away at my computer and figuring everything out. Um, so I'm working on production stuff, getting for production first before I can get DJ equipment. Yeah. Because I want to work on something that's a little bit more difficult. Um, I feel like, you know, so I'm not going to say it's going to be easy to learn to DJ. Mm -hmm. you know, it's not an easy thing, but um, I want to work on something that creating myself, my sound first yeah. before getting along to play everything out. Yeah, and what kind of music do you think you're going to make? Oh, trance. <laughs> trance? Trance? Because like, like duh, obviously. Yeah, <laughs> trance. Like, okay. That's where and, my heart is. Yeah, and what type of um, emotion do you think you're trying to have people feel like through your music then, oh, that you're going to make? I can't explain that at all. That's, that's, a, that's a tough question. I mean, just, just me and who I am and what I've been through and just channel, channeling that out, you know. Mm -hmm. um, you know I, I'm not going to say I'm, I'm going to produce something dark because I'm not in a dark place in my life right now. I'm actually pretty happy, pretty positive place in my life. Yeah. Um, it's pretty uplifting, so mm -hmm. I'm not going to say I'm chasing exactly just uplifting, but I'm going to be incorporating my own sounds that are um, from areas that I come from in my life. Um, Kind of like my heritage, mm -hmm. my kind of my twist to it. So. Yeah, and um, what do you think is your favorite thing about just the dance music culture and going to festivals? My favorite thing is just like believing in real life and just like a different world, just like the music, the vibes, the people, just. That's that's how, that's the most exciting thing. For, that's my favorite part. Is just like breaking away from everything in the world and just enjoying life. For yeah. The in there. Yeah. Do you have um, a most memorable experience? A most memorable event that you've been to? Most memorable event experience would have to be at uh, Ultra Music Festival in Miami. Mhm. Mm I was uh, I was pushing myself along backstage and. Uh, Marcus Schultz happens to walk right next to me, and I look to my left. I'm like, I was like, oh I shit, love you. <laughs> what's up? <laughs> right? And uh, he was all like, hey, how's it going? I'm like, good. I was like, are you ready for today? He's like, yeah. I was like, all right. Well, I'll catch you at your set. I'll see you later. 
So he takes off and he goes into this huge white yacht, just like sitting by the water. Mm -hmm. And uh, I caught him at a set and I crowd surfed <coughs> for him. And there was actually a pretty insane picture that my friends caught. Yeah. So I'll share that with you. So yeah. if you want it, I can shoot it to you. Yeah. But um, that would have to be the most memorable event. And then on top of that, him sharing that photo, it got to him. So he shared it. <laughs> I was like, yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. This, you know. Yeah, I've yep. seen like videos and like pictures. So how does that feel to be like crowd surfing? Like, tell me about the first time you did that, and then how it feels now. Okay, the first time I crowd surfed was <laughs> at uh, Armin van Buren set at a set of Trans Five Hundred in Miami. Mm -hmm. That was the first time. Um, yeah, I was not expecting that. Uh, Were you like, oh my god, put me down? Yeah, like, <laughs> a couple of people was like, you want to go up? I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. I was like, let's let's do it. Like, I'm enjoying the music. This is the perfect time. Like, let's do it. So we went ahead and did it, and like a couple of people, uh, they they well, some people recorded, and that video got around for a while. So um, that whole experience was pretty intense. Mm -hmm. Just like a lot of feedback. I started seeing a lot of feedback on the YouTube comments and whatnot. And, um, but being up there, it's just, you, know, you can say you're pretty much on top of the world. Yeah. So, but that's how, you know, trance music gets, it takes you up and out. Yeah. So, uh, and how's it feel now? You're just like, okay, just another day, like, all right, like, <laughs> let me go. No, it's still the same thing. Uh -huh. It's still the same for me. Like, just you get up and fly. Mm -hmm. You know, that's how the music usually is with you. Um, but, uh, it hasn't changed for me. It's still the same. I mean, sometimes I'm like, I'm worried about falling because, you know, <laughs> chair, like there's no one in the front and I'm like almost about to fall. I actually fall one time. Yeah. But, I mean, I, I got caught. What? Someone caught me. Someone caught you? Yeah, someone caught me, luckily. Oh, so. man. But yeah, my mom's like, you need to be careful. I'm like, well, don't worry, I'm fine. I'm having a good time. Yeah. Even I've come back with the broken arm. Like, Who cares? Yeah. Like, you? What's something that you feel the world can use more or less of? I feel the world can use more of love and support and being there for one another because it's it's pretty real. Like me being in dark time, like I didn't have no one that I could relate to. So I mean, how do you how do you know what to do? Mm -hmm. How do you know what to how to get out of it? How to make your choices and what to look into? And I've actually tried, you know, giving that same support to someone, you know, that I've came across because I seen, I mean, I went out to eat and I seen this kid and he seemed pretty depressed. He was in a wheelchair and uh, I came to find out that he has spina bifida mm -hmm. and I was like, okay, that's, that's intense, you know. And I found out that, you know, he's been in, he's been in a wheelchair his whole life. So I'm like, you know what, what's the best thing that I can do? What, what can I do to help in this situation? And it was reaching out to him, and I gave him my phone number. I was like, hey, man, you know, if you need a friend, someone to talk to, someone that understands you on your level, yeah. in your situation, <clears throat> hit me up. So, you know, I've been keeping in contact with him, helping him to move along, get him out of the house, mm -hmm. and, you know, get out of his little bubble, because staying in that little bubble, it's, yeah. it's not something that you want to be. And if you don't have anyone to guide you, to show you that understands you where you're coming from, yeah. you know, if I can do that for mm -hmm. someone, then why not? Yeah. So... I think that's what this world needs more of. Yeah. Um, as far as less of, um, judgments, criticism, um, ignoring someone, um, pushing people away, you know, mm -hmm. that I think that's, I don't think it's good. Mm -hmm. But at the same token too, like, I've had friends that have pushed me away, and at the same time, there was something that I learned from it. I'm like, okay, I don't need to, you know, be there with them all the time. I can grow on my own. Mm -hmm. But also at the same time, you know, there's always it's always good to have a helping hand to like show you the yeah. way. I love what you say about that because I think it does go both ways. Like sometimes I feel like people feel really awkward to just even approach someone and yeah. say, Hey, do you need someone to talk to or hey, do you mm -hmm. need help? But really it could be that one time or that one moment that really mm -hmm. changes it for somebody. Yeah. And same for someone that needs help, like it's okay to speak up as well, and I think that's really important what you said about that. Yeah, I mean, there's, it's always a two-sided thing, you know? Um, 
But like I even, you know, I came back to one of my friends and I told him like, hey, you know what? I appreciate you for pushing me away because it's, it's helped me to look inside myself and find the answers that are in here. You know, sometimes you're looking for everything out there, but everything you really need is in here. And um, that's that's just how it is. It's, yeah. it's always a two-sided thing, but yeah. Yeah. And so, um, what do you think is something that you want to be remembered for, like beyond your time? That's that's tough. Um, I just want to leave an impact on the world of how things people should be with each other, and. Um, how to actually like you know lay off your phone and you know, actually <laughs> communicate with people, support each other. Um, you know, and your, well, my thing's music, so also with music, but you know, just turning things around, bringing balance back into the world. That's, I mean, that's a pretty big thing because you know it's not easy. Mm -hmm. But I mean, if there's a will, there's a way. Yeah. That's, that's what I want to do. Awesome. And what's the best way that people can get a hold of you if they wanted to? Um, the best way to get a hold of me would be to my Instagram or Twitter or Facebook. Uh, would be at, well, right now it's at Crazy Looks Jose. But mm -hmm. I'm planning to change it because, you know, I don't want to, you know, just be like Crazy Looks Jose. So, but for right now, yeah, until then, I'll uh, we'll update it later on. Okay. And what uh, festival, what event can we catch you at next? Uh, well, I'm laying low from festivities. I'm working on, you know, getting my equipment. So the money, that, the income that I have now, I'm pushing that towards my 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 supplies. Mm -hmm. But um, until the only thing that I'm looking at right now would be EDC 2016. Okay. So 20th anniversary. <laughs> It's a must go. You yeah. have to go. Like we'll be there. We'll be there with you. God, and you gotta go. Um, I'll be there to catch you if you fall. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Someone needs to get like yeah. like a sheet or something and catch me as I'm falling. Yeah. No, but uh, yeah, EDC this year, 20th anniversary. Definitely gonna be there. Okay. Awesome. Well, thanks for coming on, and I'm sure everyone will really appreciate hearing your message. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it.